to ask Trustee Kilgore to do um, call the order and do a roll call. Uh, Trustee Suri? Present. Trustee Chekai? Here. Trustee Mena? Here. Trustee Margolis? Present. Trustee Teasdale? Absent, excused. Trustee Verma? Absent, Absent excused. excused. Trustee Kilgore? Present. Student reps. Oh, student reps, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Student Rep. Matthew? Present. Student Rep. Wang? Present. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Should we do a Pledge of Allegiance? <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This time I'd like to ask the fellow trustees to look at the agenda and either move to approve it or if they have any comments to the agenda. Moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the agenda. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? Hearing none. The agenda as presented is approved unanimously. Item number four, uh, the consent agenda. Any comments to the consent agenda? Otherwise, I'd entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. Motion to approve. Second. Uh, mo there's been a motion to approve and second the consent agenda. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposition? None. The consent agenda is approved as presented. Item number five on our agenda tonight is correspondence. Uh, looks like we have a number of correspondence tonight. Go ahead, Julie. We do. Thank you. Um, and all of them are thank you letters. On page 14, the first letter that was received was a written note by Monica Wood. She was one of our authors that uh, took part in our Fox Run event um, that was on October 22nd, just sending a thank you for her, her time and the ability to connect with us. Uh, the second thank you is from Dave Cosman. He is a teacher, fifth grade teacher, with the Novi School District at Novi Meadows, specifically. And um, this is the second year that Mr. Cosman has reached out to the library and brought two classrooms, close to 60 students, um, for a tour of the library and then an interactive program, movie, and dinner following. So he starts the day on a Friday, typically about 3.30 when the students are out, they walk to the library, they engage in the library itself, get a tour. Um, we did a scavenger hunt this year with the students. And then once, as the library goes to close, he's still with his students and parents that have um, offered to help for the evening. They do a movie, pizza night, and it gives the kids a really nice um, opportunity to connect with the library. And uh, we hope that this continues Continues to grow uh, for these fifth graders and Mr. Cosman. So it's been a great relationship that we've built with him. Uh, page 15 is a letter from uh, Nancy Maxwell. She's executive director for Sweet Dreams. We have been um, giving generously books and other um, items for even their events that they hold annually as well um, to them and in, in support of them for their projects that they have that uh, do, do increase literacy for children in the Detroit area. On page 16, is a thank you from Marianne Cornelius, who is the city clerk, um, and that's for us being a precinct, precinct 16 actually, um, at the library, and um, just a thank you for us making that available to our community. Any questions? Okay. Just a general comment. It's always nice for this correspondence, you know, to be on a committee mm -hmm. or on a board where we get all these nice thank yep. yous all the time. So many. Sometimes uh, agencies or boards, you get kind of letters of criticism and stuff. Yes. So it's constantly nice to see the, the positive feedback that we get in this course. It is, so yes. It really is nice. Uh, uh, and it's nice to receive it, and we, we do receive them regularly. Mm -hmm. uh, item number six on our agenda, presentation. I believe we have no presentations for this evening. Um, item number seven is public comment. This is an opportunity for the public. If you have any comments, any questions, this is a chance to approach the podium and, uh, and make that presentation or that comment. I'm seeing number, nobody from the public is approaching, so I'm going to move on to the next item, which is the president's report, um, which really the only item under the president's report tonight is the library goals, and I turn it back to Julie. Great. Um, just a few things to update you on. 
as we move forward with goals. Uh, page 17, just wanted to make you aware at the very bottom that we have um, put out our technology survey. It's available on our website and in paper form at the library. And it will be for the full month of November. So we're collecting information on how technology is being used, what might be useful to patrons um, in regard to new technologies. Um, are we reaching out to them? Are they aware of certain technologies that we have based on the questions that we ask? Um, and we are getting a lot of great feedback so far. So I'm hoping that we'll get a nice success rate on that information that we receive from our community. We are encouraging everyone to either drop by or go to the website through the month, month of November in order to give us their feedback. Um, continuing on, page 19 specifically, um, I'm pointing out a few things. Um, at the top of page 19, we have a new flyer that was, was created for our meeting room rentals, just giving um, additional information, uh, letting people know about pricing and how they might go about renting a room. Um, and just uh, as an um, opportunity to share, we welcome our homeowners associations to work with the library and host their meetings at the library. Um, we will waive the fee, um, the rental fee that we typically charge, if they will give us 10 to 15 minutes to talk about library programming or possibly do a tour with the association. So we hope that they will reach out to us for a space. Um, another a thing to mention is, um, in red it says, and this is in relation to our group study room committee, um, we formed this to look at ways that we might be able to change the usage of the study committee, uh, the study rooms. Um, we did get results back, it was about 50-50 with some of the information that we received. So current, we will be making changes. Um, but talking with the staff, um, we had an in-service day on Friday of last week, and we've got a few fires that we're, we're dealing with right now, and we'd like to hold this off and roll this out we're looking at next fall. So we are gonna move forward, but we need to get some other things in place and we'll, we'll be bringing this back to do in the fall. Okay, um, and then also just to note that we did send out our annual, annual donor um, letter and it included a year in review. It did not include our fiscal audited um, figures at this point, but we should be having them. I understand that they're going to be given to the council on December 2nd, so we should be seeing our final numbers for 2012-13, and then I'll be able to make that information available on our website and um, in a future um, e-newsletter that will come up for January. That way we'll make sure that at least the financial information is, is available to the public. And then last, um, I had an opportunity to meet with the fundraising committee and um, you'll see tonight some different ideas and suggestions that are going to roll forward. So we are moving forward with that aspect. Any questions or comments that I can entertain? Thank you, Judy. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Any Good. comments? Okay. Thank you. Seeing none, I'm going to move on to item nine on our agenda, which is a treasurer's report. And I will turn it over to Trustee Chekai. Thank you. Uh, the first two pages uh, consistently show the, uh, the, the budget has been approved going back to 2012-13 fiscal year going through a projected 2015-2016. Uh, uh, these are the package primarily for, uh, for your re review and refreshment for the, for the board members. Uh, if you turn to page 22, there was a, a note and response uh, from uh, Vince Cardenas, the assistant city manager, uh, specifically regarding the tax revenue collections and as indicated uh, in, in the memo, uh, while we, we have received our, our, our funds year to date, uh, there will be adjustments made and at present we are about $25,000 uh, over our original budget estimate and uh, while we don't have the specific dollar amount at this point in time, it's fair to say that that amount will probably go back to, the, to our original budget amount if not something less than that. But, uh, that's not something new. That's a consistent year-in, year-out process and just the nature of uh, tax collections and tax protests and, and, and the like. Uh, going on to page 23 uh, would be, and uh, Julie, if I may, I didn't catch this earlier, but in the future packages, can we get the font on these things uh, changed? I don't know if it was just my printer no, or otherwise. It's, but it's how I received it as well, so I'll see what I can do. Yes. <laughs> I, I personally had a challenge reading it, and we had new copy machines in my office, which was an equal challenge on, on how, to, uh, how, to, how to increase the, uh, the, the font size with keeping within an 8.5 by 11 or 8.5 yes. by 14.
17 piece of paper. I, Absolutely. Not, I did a little good, better <laughs> job, but not much. Um, <laughs> the uh, a, a particular note, this indicates that so far year to date, which would be July through the end of August, or the, through the first third of the year, four months in, so uh, for purposes uh, on, a, on an even line. Even October. What did I say? August. Yeah, October. Uh, four months in, so we're one third of the way through. So for for purposes of a, an even monthly allocation, most of these line items, if you assume that they are, uh, as we get through this, uh, spent on an, on an even t each month for the 12 month period, we should about we should be at about 33 percent when we look at the percentages used. But uh, on this page 23 in particular, uh, it indicates that year to date we have a um, 17 or a t almost a $13,000 net expenditure and exceeding uh, revenues for the for the Walker Fund uh, thus far, and uh, this amount is carried forward, uh, you know, through through page 23 or 24 as, as well. Um, I'll get to it in a bit, but I'm a, I'm a little confused. I did not get a chance to talk to to Vince as to uh, the interest on investment number shown here on page 23 indicates about $1,650. And that number doesn't coincide for me, and I may be missing something uh, on the investment summary investment sheet that's carried over on page uh, 30, I believe, which shows uh, year to date investment interest, accrued interest of $9,899. So I'm not so sure what that discrepancy relates to. If, if it is a discrepancy, I may be reading re correctly. Like I said, I did not get a chance at this point myself, and if any of the board members has an answer, I'm certainly uh, open to that. Uh, I'll move along to the um, to the library fund itself. As I indicated a moment ago, if you took a look at the, the take your first to page 27 to the total revenue total expenditure line, uh, at this point revenues received approximately two million four hundred thirty thousand dollars, which is. Uh, I believe it's 82% give or take of our annual budget. Um, that doesn't do much for me personally because we, we get all our money generally in the, or most of our money in the first quarter anyway. Probably of, of, of interesting or, or in particular note is the total expenditures thus far are at about 32%. And going back to my comment that we're a third of the way through, so about 33%. So on, on balance, uh, we're at about a third of the way through and we've expended about a third of our, our, our current budget. Now, granted that some items are more seasonal or more mm -hmm. uh, sensitive to particular times of the year, particular or particular months of the year, uh, the one category, which is our largest category, that being employee-related expenses, uh, if you take a look at those thus far, we're at about, oh, I think at about 31 out of 33 percent. So, so far, year to date, through the first third of the year, our expenditures are about $54,000 favorable to plan. So thus far, once again, some of those could be timing differences, but given the fact that the labor expense seems to be truly behind plan or favorable to plan by a couple percentage points, uh, that, that's positive. While that may not carry through for the balance of the year, but at least we're starting off three months or four months in, uh, we're headed and trending in the right direction. Um, once again, uh, on page 26 to the, the revenues, particular note we're, we're um, referencing here interest on investments to date of approximately $2,800 whereby the summary of the investments on page 30 indicate that the accrued interest year to date is about $12,000. So once again that could be a disconnect uh, on my behalf but I, but I left a word with Vince but it was late in the day so I really didn't expect to get it back to him uh, by today. Uh, another thing of, of interest that I can't explain. Uh, under the category unrealized gain or loss on investments, we're showing year-to-date negative $1,000, and we have a net percentage to budget used of 100%, and I'm not quite sure how, uh, if you have a zero for a budget entry and you have a negative, you, you lose money on it, I'm not so sure how you have a percentage to the budget, but um, not sure what that is. Uh, but once again, it's about $1,000. And also of particular note is that the Novi Township Assessment, which we had budgeted for the year of $5,800, we have collected year-to-date $18,000. And the best information that Julie and I have is that that is a correct number. The assessments were higher than anticipated. 
And while some of that money go back in the form of protests and so forth, but <coughs> once again, that's, uh, that's something we do not plan on. Uh, and that at the end of the year could be, you know, add, add to, the, to the favorable. Um, that should be a pretty good number. Up. Usually they're pretty on par with that particular assessment compared to the actual tax revenue. Well, especially when you have a 300% increase right. or, you know, favorable to plan. And so you think that somebody looked at it once, twice, maybe three times to, to come through. It, it, it's just something I don't think we've seen before. Right. No, we have not. Um, and for the for selfish reasons sitting here on the board, it's nice to see that number a little higher than, than, than our low side. Yeah. Uh, and um, lastly, from my perspective, is we go through the the balance sheet going through the fund balance at the beginning of the year as well as at the end of the year. If we keep aside for the moment the, um, the portion of the fund balance that relates to the amount that we've collected year to date for the first four months but have not spent, which is about a million five, um, that brings our fund balance to, to assist with fund shortages as we've gone through our planning process of about $2.1 million. And this year we're planning about a $400,000 cash transfer from the fund to cover our projected operating expenses, the, the shortfall between revenues and expenses. And if that $400,000 continues, um, there will be a point in time in the, the near term, not tomorrow, not the day after, but certainly in the near term before that fund gets to be uh, depleted or close to depleted. So that's something for the, it, we've talked about in the past and past treasurers have I think uh, did a good job of training all of us on, on that concept uh, during some of the meetings as well as at the budget session. So uh, that issue will come back up again. And that's it on my end. Any uh, questions or comments to Trustee Chekai in regard to Treasurer's report? <laughs> Trustee Margolis. For the most part, I echo the um, perspective offered by the Treasurer. Uh, with one exception that was very late. With respect to the fund balance deficit, I don't know that we budgeted to spend it, more so that we kind of set a debt ceiling level that we won't exceed it. So the expectation is anything up to, but not to exceed, but I certainly don't plan on losing four hundred eighty thousand dollars in the current year. I, I accept that clarification. I'll, I'll accept that as my clarification. Okay. Well, <laughs> well no, it, it's only <laughs> because <laughs> it's, it's funky. Me too. <laughs> because municipal accounting forces all capex mm -hmm. expenditures to be treated as operating expenditure yep. in the current year, and if we reinvest in the facility or in the parking lot or whatever, it may force us to draw upon the reserves, which is. One of the reasons why the Finance Committee will be meeting in the future, probably to talk about how we're going to handle fund balance. But that being said, I just want to point out a few things that, of note that occurred during the month. Um, we had room rentals, $2,455 on a four-month year-to-date basis. That's almost $8,100 which is 24% greater than the same period a year ago. So again, kudos to the staff for utilizing the facility. Well, and a thank you to the community for, for coming to the library and using us, so, yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of uh, expenditures, uh, the personal services in aggregate fall within normal parameters, with the exception being we had a two-month health insurance bill, almost 30 a little over 30000 Is this going to be a bi-monthly process? Not that I've heard, but I can double check. Okay. Um, and I would assume that relates to, uh, on the balance sheet, the due other funds, the fact that the coverage is being paid, now being allocated and charged. Mm -hmm. So right. it, it's treated as an interdepartmental obligation here. Yeah. The other thing I noticed that TLN services are now a quarterly charge. They have been. They typically we do typically get charged quarterly. Okay, yes. so you're going to see spikes. Correct, and and we have we have seen that sometimes through the year. Mm -hmm. okay, that much unusual. 
there. So the change in the cash was down 13% month over month. And again, I don't plan on using that whole $480,000 deficit, but it's there to be drawn on. Um, there was one discrepancy on the Walker Fund, the 269, under the Book It expenditures. There's $69 that just doesn't add up from where we were a month ago. So I don't know if a bill got allocated and should have been charged through September. Um, I will check on that. Okay, but if you take the $1,103 for October and add it to the prior balance, you're out of whack. Okay, thank you. And that's it. Um, any other questions or comments? I, I, I had one if nobody else did, and, and that has to do, and it's not a big number, um, but it's the expense line item uh, for uh, pension defined benefit. Um, we last year had nothing budgeted for that item. This year, I think we plugged in $2,200, um, kind of a just in case kind of a number. Mm -hmm. We obviously haven't <laughs> drawn for the first four months on that. Is that, and, and if we were drawn, I assume we'd be drawing it on a kind of a monthly basis. You or should be. Will there be a time that we will get some report from the pension fund that indicates based on income or based on losses or, or whatever we have to kick into that? And if you know what time period that, and those, to me, those were always irregular they were. kind of time periods that all of a sudden they, they Show sell us. us, oh, by the way, yeah. you're up or you're down or something like that. I don't know if you know when that's coming up, if it's coming up. I don't, and I'll be happy to ask the finance department to find out if they, the audit. Yeah. yeah, yes, for the, well, that the audit was for last year's fiscal. Right. And the unfunded pension liability should be footnoted in the audit. Oh, correct. For what was there, yes. Yeah. But then I can also find out if they're expecting any new reports. But I think it's mirrors who basically it is. periodically mm -hmm. give out a statement as yes. to you know, your high, your low, or whatever. And, um, I will look into where we where we stand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'll just take this time and this opportunity to mention that we think we're, our pension liability is 100% exactly. funded. It is right now. Yeah. We can understand it, too. When the market crashes. Yep. Yes. Oh, gosh. Um, any other comments or questions? Thank you, Trustee Check, Trustee Checkeye and Trustee Margolis. Um, we will move on to item number 10 then, the director's report. And that goes back to you again, Julie. Okay. A few things. First and foremost, which was number one on, on my director's report, uh, director's report, we do have two changes in the 2014 um, library meeting schedule that I need to make you aware of. Um, typically, we are the third Wednesday of the month, but because of the way the year falls and starts in January, there were meetings that had to be bumped and changed and budget meetings that actually got factored in. So we worked with the city to make sure that we are here and in this spot and working with SWAC, so everything is going to be taped, but there are two changes. So our January meeting, we will not be on the third, but we will be on the fourth Wednesday that month. And then in April, we're going to switch from a Wednesday to a Thursday evening, and those are noted in here. Same time, seven o'clock, but we just wanted to make sure we, I, I always try to want to be here just to make it easier for our taping and for us to gather, but just wanted to make note for you for those two changes. And that's also reflected in the calendar in the back, okay? Um, we have reached out and have made a new uh, partnership and have gotten to know a new school in town called um, Flex Tech Academy. And um, they currently have 20 students enrolled. Um, they are an alternative school, grades 9 through 12, um, very much project-based in the way that they teach and interact with their students. Um, they invited us to their new site, which is just off of 10 Mile, as you close to Karam um, Drive. And um, Margie and I went and met with the staff at first, then we met with the students, let them know uh, a good percentage of the students are Novi residents, which was great because then we could talk about their tie-in with the library and then how we might get um, those teenagers interacting and, and taking part with some of the activities that we already offer at the library, which one being our teen advisory board. So that's a new relationship with us. Um, we. Um, 
had our voting day and we saw close to 400 people in the building for that. So that was additional traffic in the building and an opportunity um, for a lot of library card renewals and new library cards to be given out. So that's, I think, a great thing that we're offering and, and I do appreciate the city working with us to be a, a polling site. Um, also, I'm very happy to report we have finished our community read, which was Mark Benelli's book, Detroit City is the Place to Be. We had a great turnout again for our uh, final event with the author. Close to 150 people were in attendance. Um, he gave a great presentation and spoke about the book, obviously, and then his relationship with the city. Um, great questions came from the audience, and um, from there, he met with our Novi High School students and close to 300 of them on the Friday morning following our event, which was really great for the students that have that opportunity. Um, students came from the economic classes, the um, journalism classes, and the um, writing classes. So a lot of different kids in different areas of um, learning had the opportunity to meet with that author. Um, I am so excited to report that we had over 700 people check out the book, which to me I think sounds fantastic. You know, we were just a few numbers sh um, short from last year, so we're doing really well with keeping those numbers and keeping people engaged in this type of activity with the library. And of course, we've had great partners, which is Northville District Library, the Salem South Lyon District Library, Wixom Public Library, and the Lyon Township Library. So um, next year is number five already, and uh, we just keep moving along, plugging along, and looking for a great title, which we will be sitting down in January and starting that whole process again. So it's very exciting for us. Um, we had on November 15th, we were closed to the public, but we weren't closed in terms of the staff being off for the day. They worked all day and we had an in-service. And this in-service was probably the best attended and the most comments positive from the staff. Um, we focused on Novi itself, learning about the history of Novi, and then um, we had a presentation by city manager Clay Pearson to talk about Novi now and future and how, uh, you know, the demographics of Novi. A lot of information was shared and we've had a lot of new staff come on, um, even in the last two, three years, that this really was helpful for our staff to get to know our community a little better. Um, we were able to take a tour of MSU's toll gate uh, which was fantastic to learn about the history there, um, the families that have been involved in the community. Um, and then we literally took a bus tour, thanks to the Novi School District, um, letting us borrow two buses, and we toured around the city. And we went into industrial parks. I didn't even know we're here. We went up toward, you know, we saw some of the historical homes and some of the historical um, buildings that are still in, in um, still in the city. Um, we went down roads that, you know, if you're, and this happens when you get stuck in the library and working, you sometimes forget what else is out there. So it was a great opportunity for us to connect with the entire city and get a good feel for it. Um, I thank Kathy much because she came and spoke about Novi history and gave the staff a really good overview of how the city was established and the families that first started the city of Novi. So it was, it was a great experience. Um, um, the staff really enjoyed it. Great feedback from the staff as well. And we had a great committee um, that headed it up. Mary Storch, Mary Robinson, Mike Postula, and Christian Abbott were our four staff people that took this concept and ran with it and planned the day. So, and, and we also thank Library Pub for our lunch because they accommodated us. So we had a great day in the building and out. And then we wrapped up for the afternoon with department head meetings. And really those are the most effective meetings because it's everyone at one time. Um, you know, we work very hard at our communication and making sure everyone knows what's going on, but when you have everybody in one place hearing the same message, it's very, it's very helpful. So I thank the board because you've given us the opportunity to do that and close, and we look forward to June because you've given us another opportunity, and we hope to get just as much, um, you know, uh, training and, and out of that um, for that day as well. Um, I am in the throes of working on DSLRT reporting, the state aid reporting, and, Lionel, and library journal reporting. These are all major um, reports that are required annually that we um, provide information so that we can see how we compare with other libraries. Um, so, it's, so that is the time of year. I'm working with my department heads and getting a lot of statistics right now. Um, teen Space. Teen Space has been overwhelmingly used this year. 
um, we're doubling our numbers from a year ago, seeing 30 kids, now we're seeing close to 60 using the space. So we've definitely have the word out and the teenagers are finding it useful. Um, we've had, had some challenges this year. Um, and we've been told that, you know, there's, there's a group that's more challenging. The school's also working with a group that's more challenging of, of students and teens. Um, but I can reassure you that we've got great communication with the school, great communication with our Novi Police Department, and um, we're making every effort we can to continue to keep teen space relevant and useful to the students, along with some of the behavior, unfortunately, that we've seen. Um, we will be requiring student IDs, and that was a recommendation by both our um, our uh, resource center officer, our resource officer, uh, Detective Zabek, and from the principal, Nicole Carter, um, because the students are required to have them on them, and this way it gives us a chance to connect with the kids and get to know the kids better if they're providing some ID for us. Um, so I just wanted to make you aware of that. Um, our monitors are doing a great job, and um, you know we, we hope that this will be another successful year for us for this opportunity. Um, and then I, I included, which I'm, I'm not going to point out, but give you an opportunity to read, but um, lots of feedback from the staff that had the opportunity to attend the Michigan Library Association Conference. I asked them to give feedback and report back what they've learned. Obviously, they find it very beneficial. I thank the, the um, board again for giving us the opportunity to continue education for our staff and to be able to send um, our staff to these opportunities and to these conferences because they are an opportunity to learn um, new ideas, network with other libraries, and, and see what else is going out there. And you can see from their notes that they go and they really enjoy the day and get a lot out of it. Um, other than that, I'm happy to entertain any questions um, that you might have. Oh, I'm sorry. There is one more thing I want to add. Um, the city introduced... Um, back in January of 2013, early January, um, a leadership philosophy that came from their department heads. And we took a little time as the library to read through it and look as, as managers and how we'd work with our employees um, to provide a similar type of um, leadership philosophy. And if you'll look on page 40, um, we've gone through the process. We've done um, a little bit of wordsmithing to make it more for the library itself. And this was also introduced during our in-service on Friday of last week to our staff so that they can see where we're coming from when it comes to customer service and how we feel where we are um, backing and supporting our staff as well as how we present ourselves when it comes to leadership in the community and with the library. That's all I have. Any questions for our director? Trustee Menno. Hey, Julie, thanks um, again for, uh, thank your staff for the write-ups on the MLA conference. Mm -hmm. For me, that was probably the most enjoyable part of, yep. of the packet uh, um, this month. Um, I, I was uh, most interested uh, in the write-up that Evan had in here, um, well, obviously because of uh, you know, the, the technology side. Mm -hmm. I, I noticed that he had met with some of the folks up at the Traverse City Library. Mm -hmm and maybe um, took some takeaways regarding maybe some uh, possible improvements at Correct. some point for mm -hmm. website. And also, um, it was the, the redesign of their ILS piece. Now, that's really the one that I had the question on. Sure. That wouldn't really be something that we would necessarily look because we're tied in with TLN. We today. are. We're currently tied in with TLN, but I can tell you, um, I've just joined the um, XCOM uh, committee which looks at ILS and improvements. So being part of that committee now, I know that TLN, they're, um, they're in a five-year contract. I believe this is their third year with the ILS that we're with. And it's my hope that we will look at more improvement. If not, there's even talk of, you know, down the line, do we look at a oh, new vendor? It's our catalog. I'm sorry, it's the interlibrary loan. It's the, the loaning system, the, the, the so it's our catalog system that we make available with all of our materials, and which we share with a number of libraries. So I'm, I don't know where TLN will go in the future, but I am part of those um, conversations now. Um, sometimes, and, and I've shared this with um, our director of TLN, that we find sometimes our ILS can be um, clunky, chunky, difficult for, for patrons to use and even staff. Um, but I have seen improvements 
over the years, and I know that they continue to look at um, new ways of improving the ILS system. So, yeah. So, uh, but they are separate. Yes, Traverse City is totally different, and they're on their own, uh, and, which and that, is that a was benefit. Really it, right? Which but, but, can be a benefit because then you can customize. If you're if you're running your own system, you have the opportunity. Right, and that and was I believe really there's my open question. Source. It looks like they were, and and I kind of went in and looked mm -hmm. at some of the software that they were using. It's open Correct. source. Software it is. And, it's evergreen. And it was nice enough to mm -hmm. to to document what that was. But my question is then, um, the route that they went, they really can't do uh, you know interlibrary loaning and things like that like we can do currently correct. through TLN is that correct? correct they don't have a consortium that they can they can interloan yes as as easily they are part of uh, Melcat which is the statewide system which we're also part of too so we offer both which I think is the best of all worlds for our patrons um, but yes they have some limitations because their catalog is more limited mm -hmm. and, and just out of curiosity is TLN Pretty much the only game in town. No. Is there any competition for them in the area too? If, if at some point we decide to look at alternatives mm -hmm. for whatever reason, there are other cooperatives, um, Woodlands, Lakeland. So there are. I, I think we're down to for the whole entire state of Michigan. I think we're down to about five, five or six cooperatives. There used to be many based on regions of the state, but they have slowly. Um, died off, unfortunately, because of revenue and just, you, you know, pulling together. But TLN is one of the largest, and they are pretty much southeast Michigan. So they're servicing just over 60 libraries. Christy mm Margolis. -hmm. I have two questions referring to page 43, the building operations report. Yeah. First one, <coughs> just a little clarification. With respect to dealing with recent vandalism, does that have any correlation to requiring the student IDs at the teen study? It does, yes. We did unfortunately have an issue um, with a bathroom where we had a partition that was um, vandalized. We have yet to determine who, um, unfortunately, but um, it is due to that. So we're taking different measures. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the second question, you had a number of uh, maintenance opportunities here, including the HVAC system, but it begs the question because I haven't seen an expenditure for the filters that we had talked about previously. Oh yeah, they've been, they've been already expensed, I'm almost positive, because they're done and installed. I can, well, I can I double check, they were but. Tens of thousands of dollars. Huh? The filters? Yeah. No, we were able to get them um, I believe we finally got them at close to three, like half of, yeah, it was about 3,000. The, the original quote was very high, but right. we were able okay. to work with, yes. Okay, well then I'm glad, thank mm -hmm. you. Absolutely. Yep. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, Trustee, check out. Really real quick, on the, on the maintenance issues, uh, how are we doing on the emergency lighting checkup? They're, they're actually, um, they were in last week um, installing the new ones and, and bring them us, bringing us all up to speed. So we're, we're, re, we're repurposing and, and redoing about 20 of them. Do you have a rough cost? As to I don't, but I can, okay. I can get that for you and be happy to send it out. Mm -hmm. Thank you. There may be a question you had of some of your upcoming <laughs> yes, because they're doing the work. They haven't charged us yet. <laughs> <I'm sorry? laughs> I said they're doing the work. We haven't seen the invoice yet. So, yeah, they were in. Actually, they were in last week and early this week. Um, we had boxes all over of where they were going to be replacing. So I'll be sure to get that out to you. Do you have any comments on the additional reports other than answering some I do questions not. in nope. advance? <laughs> Can I ask I'm another sure. facility-related question? Sure. Given the recent storms that we had mm -hmm. with the winds, that big glass window on the western wall stood up like a charm, didn't it? Sure you? did. We did great. And even with, um, we did not lose power and without a generator system and stuff, but we did great. We really did. Mm -hmm. No issues whatsoever. Well, no damage um, that what? has been reported to me from the high winds either. Let's throw an attaboy then to the building authority yes. and to the contractor that built that yes. quality mm -hmm. facility. They did. It was. It's. It's been very good. Good. Mm -hmm. good. Any other questions, comments? Thank you. Nothing to add on the additional reports, Julie. Uh, no. Okay. Uh, then uh, friends of the Novi Library report. Oh, I. Uh, 
let's see, they um, gave me their meeting minutes from October 9th. Um, nothing major stood out in terms of reporting. I can tell you that they had a very successful book sale on Saturday, um, this past Saturday, the uh, 16th. Um, you know, they're only uh, open from 10 until 4, so six hours we're talking, and I know that they made over $1,000 in those, in those six hours, so they were pretty pleased. Um, and that gives them an opportunity to really clean out and, and make room for, for new materials being donated. So it was, they were very happy with that. I happened to come into the library oh, in the did? afternoon, and it almost looked like people leaving a grocery store. <laughs> Because everybody had like a big bag or something. Right. That they, not yeah. everybody, but yeah. almost everybody was yeah. carrying something out. You know, with it's books serious or business. Like that. That, that, it I is. Mean, it, it looked like mm -hmm. people leaving a grocery store with all their goods. <laughs> yeah. There. The other thing I want to point out uh, for the friends, just um, just so they are recognized, and if you look on page 54, um, Christine Christina Salvatore, our community. Um, coordinator at the library, she wrote a really nice article, which it w showed up in the um, uh, Novi Now magazine that's out, and um, so she wrote a nice article uh, getting people aware of the, the blowout book sale that's going to happen that we do annually, so just wanted to share with you that, that article, and we're all set. Okay. Any questions? I think we're going to move on then to the student representative report. October 30th, we premiered the tween advisory board at the Novi Middle School, and that was a success with 15 kids who um, talked about new ideas, and they were very eager and had lots of good ideas. <laughs> okay, so um, as was mentioned before, the teen space has been a huge success, and um, what's also being done at the high school right now, it's not in here, but like National Honor Society has started a tutoring program to help the kids in the teen space that are struggling with academics. So we could just show up there and tutor children and get volunteer hours. And upcoming programs, we, we had dollars for college last night. Uh, tomorrow night is the Hunger Games program, so there's gonna be Hunger Games and pizza. And December 13th is Winter Craftiness along with the tab meeting. If I can add, um, we really do have a great teen advisory board and group of teenagers because from that model and um, the great role models that we actually have that sit on the teen advisory board, we were able to take now to the middle school and try to get a new, you know, a new group of kids, a younger group of kids involved in the library similar to what we do with our teenagers. So I thank them because they give us the opportunity to, you know, brainstorm with them and figure out how that'll work and then to take it and take that model now to another group of kids and that was very successful. So we're now we're going to be working with tween and teen advisory boards, which we're pretty excited about, and getting feedback then from those two different groups of students, so it's very helpful to us. Very good. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the report. Mm -hmm. Question, quick question, uh, Trustee Chekhov. Yes, I have a question. Uh, first, what is tomorrow's movie? The Hunger Games. It is The Hunger Games, okay. Mm -hmm. And then the pizza will be provided from? Is there pizza? No. No? Okay. All right. <laughs> I misread it. I was getting excited. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's hungry, no more pizza. Yeah. <laughs> Any other comments or questions? If not, uh, moving on to item number 13, which is the historical commission report. Not applicable, I think, tonight? That is correct. Okay. Um, moving into committee reports. Item 14. Probably something from the finance committee, right? Actually, um, a date. For, for finance committee, I have a date that um, Victor Cardenas and um, staff from his finance department would like to meet with the finance committee on December 11th at 7 o'clock. I had the opportunity to send that out today in an email if you missed it. Um, it will be at the library. I apologize. What, yep. what, was, the, what was the date again? It is De Wednesday, December 11th at 7 p.m. And so that's for us just to, to talk about the Walker Fund. Um, as we're getting uh, to the end of that contract um, and 
and then we can go from there. I think it'll be a good conversation to start to have and then lead into the December meeting, which is why I tried to do that, um, plan it ahead of time. And then um, we did have a fundraising committee meeting. Um, Trustee Mena and Trustee Stirring, or President Stirring, um, were in um, attendance. And in your packet tonight, what was introduced and what we will roll forward with is some new ideas um, for fundraising. What I tried to do is, if you look on page 37, I gave a little recap as to what's currently going on um, for fundraising. So we have, um, we have a relationship with the Novi Town Center and currently they have a Facebook promotion. And they're looking for people to, from our site and, and people that we know, to push out and have people like the Novi Town Center um, Facebook page. And by doing that, if we get up to a thousand likes, we're going to get $1,000 from the Novi Town Center. So we're really trying, they extended it. It was supposed to be done in September and they've extended it through uh, the 1st of January. So I don't know if you see me on Facebook, but I keep reminding friends who haven't, you know, liked their page. I keep telling them to do that. We're over 600 currently. So if we could just get those last 400 people. So if you have a Facebook page and you could go ahead and um, go to our page and share it and then encourage friends and family to like it. Again, that's, that's an opportunity for us to get a very nice donation back from the Novi Town Center. Um, we sent out our annual letter of support, so currently we are receiving donations um, from, our, from our community and supporters of the library. Um, we have a scheduled scrapbooking event that will take place in February. Um, we are looking to install, and this is due from the wish list from our friends, to install um, so an art hanging system. And from there, we're going to mirror what the city does in terms of giving artists the opportunity to hang their um, their art collections in the library. And what they do is they give a percentage back to the library if a piece of artwork is actually purchased from being on display. Um, typically, it's anywhere from 20 to 30% of what the value is of the art. So we'll be, um, th there's going to be uh, procedures and stuff that'll be put in place for that, but that's where we're heading. Um, and then, of course, we had uh, we have an on the road, um, back by popular demand because everyone just loved it. Um, they're going to be traveling to Rochester, Michigan, in April, and so we have a goal there for hopefully attendees going on the on the road. And then, of course, our Wrecking Crew movie premiere that we had, which raised uh, um, just over six hundred dollars um, for that event. And then just below are the new fundraising ideas. Some ideas that I brought to Trustee Mena and um, President Stirring when we met. Um, we are moving forward with a, a new coupon book. And this is an opportunity. You have examples of what it, um, what, you know, what the, oh, I didn't include what the book looks like. I apologize. I gave you the, the sponsorship form. I will send that to you. Um, it's not fully designed yet. We're actually working with our um, artist student that's an intern right now from the Art Institute of Novi, and he's doing the design work on that. But what it will be is we're not going to do the actual book at event this year. We're going to take a break from it, and instead we're going to roll out for January and for the whole entire year an opportunity to sell a coupon book to our patrons and our friends um, in support of the library. The coupon book will cost $30, and it will be Novi businesses that are in the book. So really gearing it towards our Novi community so that they can get the best bang and the benefit. Um, I've had some great response already from reaching out to businesses. Thank you from the meeting because there were businesses sparked as we talked. And um, I'm currently right now just putting out the calls, getting people interested. Like I said, very positive response to companies sponsoring a coupon, you know, depending on the size, um, which you see actually in there. If you look at the sponsorship form, it gives you what the size of the coupons are. They're sponsoring for a large size coupon at $125 or a smaller size half size coupon for 70 and then they put their discount of what they're giving to the curp to the person who's purchased the coupon book. Um, it's gone over very well um, because it is our goal to sell 500 coupon books at $30 and a net of 15000 for the library, which is greater than what we have received. Gross. gross, I'm sorry, uh, which is what we've received, um, uh, greater than what we've received in the last few years with Book It. Um, so still trying to increase and better our fundraising so opportunities. What would be net expectation be? 
actually, it's I'm hoping at no cost because I'm hoping that the sponsorship costs outweigh the the printing cost is what we would be what we'd be seeing. So we're looking at a a gross of fifteen thousand. Did I did I answer your question? Gross of fifteen, no no cost. No is cost. It? I'm hoping that the sponsorship costs for um, the actual coupon itself cover the printing costs, and we're going in that direction. So. I'm hope that oh, I'm hoping that it's completely um, paid for without any cost. So that's one idea. Um, the second is um, an opportunity. Uh, we had um, a designer um, put together a new uh, T-shirt design, which um, shows our new motto of inform, inspire, include. So we're hoping to roll that out. I'm thinking that's going to be more towards June because of it's a T-shirt and summer reading, and we get a lot of um, children and, and adult participation at that time. So we'll look to see if we can get many people on board with purchasing a library T-shirt, and, and, and that's more marketing. Um, I don't expect to raise as much, but um, a little bit of, of revenue from that. And then last is looking into an opportunity um, to work uh, with the Detroit Tigers and be involved in their concessions. At um, we have to we have to guarantee that we'll, we will be at ten games um, for the season. And um, so I have uh, sent in information saying that we're interested. Um, this will be an opportunity for us to get some regular volunteers working with us to be involved in the Detroit Tigers and, and at the games, but at the same time working their concessions and receiving revenue back um, by doing that. Um, so it's just time that we'd be giving up, um, hopefully for some donations back. And on the average, when um, when a nonprofit group works with them, they can make anywhere from, I've seen the average of from four to 10,000, uh, depending on how the sales work. So I, I put in a goal of 5,000 for the year to see if we can if we can reach that. And there'll be more information coming on that because there, we'll need to make sure that we have a good, um, 30, 32 volunteers that we can have guaranteed, um, which I would be putting them into teams of three, three teams that they'd rotate and they'd maybe put in maybe two to three games for the season where they'd help for the library. Um, so, and then there's a training period. You'd have to go down one day and, and be trained on, on where you'd be working. So. so if a typical game is three to three and a half hours, mm -hmm. you need to have set up in advance and clean up afterwards, so you're talking a four or five hour commitment? Um, it probably, yes, we're driving down there and then, yep, and then the game itself. I don't think there's much setup and takedown from, from the conversations I've had. It's more just being there and being the, the, the bodies. Everything is pretty much set up for you. Um, they have their stock. They have different percentages for what you would actually gain depending on if you're selling beverage or if you're selling food. Um, and then that, that makes a difference where you are um, selling in the concessions. But just an opportunity to, to build people getting involved. I'd make a suggestion if you need 10 people per game that you shoot for having 15 or 16 so you can rotate, rotate. them in so they're not all missing the game. And if someone has the vacation. Entire three and a half hours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, but that, I'm so, assuming that means free park admission. Uh, yes, it is. But so, so those are some of the newer ideas that we're, we're looking at. Um, some out of the box, different things that we can, we can wrap our, our heads around for this year. We need something new. The, to reassure you, the Book It event is not going away. I just think we need, a, we need a chance to take a break from it and then maybe bring it back in a year or so, a couple of years, and do an event like that. I also shared with um, President Stirring and, and Trustee Mena that we are looking for a way to do more thank yous and do an event like that. So probably in the fall, once we have our businesses on board with the coupon, once we get um, you know volunteers helping us with these events, and then people that have um, donated to the library over the last year, we can bring them in as a thank you and do more of, a, of an event that way. So we don't want to lose that either, that opportunity. So that's all I have. Any thoughts or questions? Yeah, it, it, just, just one comment in, in response to um, Trustee Mar Margolis. When, when we looked at this before, and it looks like there's 10, 10 persons per game, we have raised the question already in terms of you really don't have 10 people at each concession stand. You only have two or three. So we weren't sure whether the 10 already gave us the fudge factor to move people in and out 
or the 10 people really were at three or four different locations. Right, they but, are. But, but mm -hmm. your point is well taken, although that the 10 may already mm -hmm. give you some flex of rotation. Yeah, the only reason I brought it up is that you might attract somebody if they know they only have to work an hour or 90 minutes. Right. They have a couple hours to enjoy being at the park, right. you know, and hanging out. And then yeah. spend half the time working and half the time Watching. getting a, a free ball game. Right. You, it might help recruit. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I have I one know. question. Yes, absolutely. Um, and that is, can you remind me, or, or our viewers, what happens on the road when we travel to Rochester? Oh, where where they're going? Yeah, yeah, where they're going, what they're going to see. I haven't gotten all the itinerary yet. Oh, so yeah. it's still being, I know that for sure they're, they're heading up to Rochester. Um, uh, Margie Carp Oper, our uh, assistant director of public service, is working with our wonderful volunteer, Kathy Crawford. It will be both of them putting on the program again. People have asked, are they going to be the two MCs? Uh -huh. And um, so I know that they're going up there. I believe there's a historical museum. There's a couple things that they've looked into okay. um, that that they will tie in for the day, but it will be in the Rochester area. Gotcha. Thank, you. Thank you. There will be more. Uh, we'll probably have details. Um, because I even know Engage wasn't all completed either when we had to turn Engage. So probably by January, everything will be finalized for the April. Maybe we get to see the painting at Meadowbrook. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they are a fantastic group. I'm telling you, they keep you in stitches the whole time. Tristan Wiggles. It's a With the chair's indulgence, uh, as it relates to the Finance Committee meeting in December, I realize we don't have a full board present tonight, but can I just take a, a minute or two and uh, just do an informal survey of the members present today? I'm anticipating the gist of the conversation in December will be now, instead of having two separate funds, we will have one fund. Mm -hmm. So now you'll have the combined funds to consider, so how do we want to invest or allocate or restrict or, or designate or the various things that need to be done going forward. But I'd like just an informal uh, perspective, I guess, of what your thoughts are about committing long-term investment, given that interest rates have been historically artificially low at some point they're going to s spike up again. It seems counterintuitive if we want to try and take advantage of an extra percent today and invest long term that we find ourselves two, three years from now locked into an investment vehicle that now is earning three, four percent when it could have been earning eight, nine, depending on what the market does in the future. So I guess as chairman of the committee, I'd like some direction in terms of how we layer or stagger investing some of the, you know, fund balance reserve. Well, my, my initial thoughts in regard to that is I think we've, we've always had a pretty good handle on what our expenditures are going to be through the year mm -hmm. in terms of our budget. And, you know, we've been pretty good at that. And so uh, have always considered the excess of what we're going to spend in the budget um, to be open for longer term investor um, in terms of uh, being able to commit for, for a longer period of time. Um, and I, I think with, you know, we should commit for longer periods of time if we're going to maximize the return that we can get on these investments uh, with some staggering. I mean, we don't have any specific guidelines, but, but, I, but I certainly don't think we have to invest short term. I mean, I think that I agree wholeheartedly. Invest in short term with money that you know is going to be out there for four or five or six years um, is not, you know, what you want to do. You can you can get better rates of return if you go out longer. Agreed. Not, not necessarily. But how much do you want to commit long term, assuming that um, the tax base is stabilized and that we're, the values are going to start recovering, <coughs> and that the deficits that we are, have incurred for the last few years you know, maybe we get the back to break even budgets again, then any reserves, do you want to lock in and do you want to lock in not knowing what's going to happen in the near term? Trustee Kilgore has a thought. 
I, I agree with uh, Christy Margolis. It uh, looks like it's going to be a rising interest rate market. Um, I don't think anyone's got a crystal ball exactly when it's going to happen, how it's going to happen, or how much it's going to happen. Um, so my thinking would be that uh, we should structure our longest term investments at something like about a year and then uh, see what happens. But I don't think rates are, there's no room for rates to go down from where they are. So, but I agree, staggering, I'd say staggering at uh, six months, a year, you know, those types of, in that type of range. I mean, we're still subject to the city's investment policies, which tend to be a little more conservative, and mm -hmm. we're very appreciative of riding piggyback on, on their services. But again, I'd be hesitant to, you know, think that we put away for four or five years and then find that we, you know, uh, missed an opportunity when the market changed drastically. I think even at uh, four or five years, you're not getting much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you for indulging me. Oh. No, no, certainly. <laughs> it, 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 it's, it, it, it's, it's worth um, thinking about, and, and I would also throw up. Is that meeting on the 11th a fixed date? It, it, I, I reached out to them first to find out their availability. Okay. So it, they were available on that date. And I had thrown out a Saturday, which they weren't too happy with with the holidays. Unfortunately, we're coming, you know, coming to the end. And he, he reached out saying, hey, I know we need to talk about this. And I, I, I know he was very busy with the audit. Mm -hmm. And so now we're on his radar. So it is pretty fixed for that date. Oh, okay. You could probably call in, though. I mean, this does not just have to be a committee. This could be, as long as we don't approve anything and it comes back this which is why I I set it up for us to do this on the 11th and then had the board meeting coming um, you know I have no problem with a call-in or something if we want more board members involved because well, well, I think I you're out of town but I, I will be out of town that right week. And, and, and if the meeting works you know I don't want to change I don't want to change right. the date maybe I will avail myself of that call-in yeah, option we can do um, I, I think um, in, in addition to some type of staggering of long term uh, we always have to consider, I'm not necessarily advocating, but I always think we have to consider um, whether or not, you know, we want to consider an, an endowment of, of some sort, and we've looked at that, and yeah. we've backed off it before, and, you know, because you do the endowment, uh, it's I have commit a the principal, and you can't get the principal back, right. you just get, right. but, I, but I think those it's, are always ripe for discussion. They are. Um, and I actually have a meeting coming up with um, the Northville Foundation just just to see um, because it's not we have not looked at them and with them being local um, what those opportunities would be so I'll be able to bring that to you just as just as more information but you're right I always think in that vein as well as you know an endowment mm -hmm. These are nice discussions and, and at the have. same time, you're earning that interest, and then you're using it or, or, or somehow getting some back from it. So it's mm -hmm. yep, yeah, it's a good thought. Mm -hmm. Well, but we're also recognizing now yes. market fluctuations. Right. So we have to be prepared. You know, if, if disaster occurs and the market collapses, we could take a thirty percent mm -hmm. hit. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, that's yeah. also possible too. Yeah, it is. You're Chances right. are very remote. Okay. Well, and I appreciate the it, fact it that we've been more conservative. Needs. Yeah. yeah, that we've been more conservative in, in the years when we've talked about this and planned. So I don't think there's anything wrong with still staying that way when we have our conversations. Because you're right, we just don't know. And property, um, personal property tax is going to change in August. I don't know yet what the effects of that will be on our budget. Um, but we will. We will see some effects of it. Some libraries are really going to be affected by it. I don't think uh, the conversations I've had with um, city manager um, Pearson don't seem to be as dr dramatic for us. But again, that's that's revenue. So, mm -hmm. okay. yep. Any other comments? Not. So, Mark, let me know if you. We are, that is, yes, at this point. So let me know if you're interested. I think we could open this and have it be a full board meeting. Um, I know that it's fundraising, or I know that it's finance, but if you, which everyone is welcome to be to be there. Just we have to make sure that we don't um, 
you know, nothing's approved, nothing's done, there's no action taken. And then I'll post it if there's going to be more than just the committee members. I usually do, but I'll, it, it'll be full board. My recommendation is leave it as a committee meeting rather than a, uh, a formal uh, ad hoc okay. meeting okay. of the entire board. And we'll make recommendations. We can have discussion then at the next meeting. And if you're going to have it at a place where you can have it on a phone, just give us a call-in number. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, moving on to item number 15, then, which is public comment. This is a second opportunity for any members of the audience that have any comments to the library uh, to approach the podium and to make those comments. I'm not seeing any members running up to the podium, so I'm going to consider the, the opportunity open and now closed. And moving on to item number 16, which is motions or matters for board action. There are no matters for board action this evening, to my knowledge. Um, uh, before um, I entertain a uh, motion for adjournment, which is item 17, um, I just want to make the comment in regard to the future events that are, are listed here. Um, Friday, December, it's listed as Friday, December 7th, 6 to 9, light up the night at the city of Novi. That's really Friday, December 6th. Um, and I think you had another date in there. I do. Thank you, President Stirring. I also wanted to just bring to your attention that the Novi Historical Commission, um, their, their normally scheduled meeting would have been November 27th, which is the night before Thanksgiving. They've canceled that meeting and they've rescheduled for Wednesday, December 4th at 2 o'clock. So just wanted to make uh, you aware of that in case. And there's, as you can see, lots of um, activities going on um, in December. Um, lots of events and closures um, and I also want to make note to you the budget sessions I did look at my calendar and I've plugged them in for you so that you have them in advance um, we're going to meet on Saturday February 1st and Saturday March 1st um, for our two sessions I have put out a call that if you are looking for additional information or something more as we're in the process of putting together our budgets and um, reports and things that typically you have wanted in the past, please let me know um, because that's what I'm, I'm doing all of December along with DSLRT and the state aid and all the other <laughs> wonderful number crunching we're doing. Um, so please let me know if there's anything that I can, I can provide to you. Um, and then, and that puts us in a um, good calendar um, for the city and what they're expecting from us and when we would be turning in things. Um, gives us a little more time. I, I think we might have more discussions, which I gave more time from the first meeting to the second um, when it comes to budgets this year. And um, that's, that's all I have. Trustee Margolis. I'm not looking to drag the meeting on, really, but I, 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 I do need to ask, and maybe it was included in your report and I missed it earlier, sure. but I remember six months or so ago when we talked about September 1st mm -hmm. being the go-live date for the requirement of everybody having a library mm -hmm. card, and I thought one of the directives was we were supposed to get feedback you are in correct. In terms of how things are progressing. You are correct, so. and that is in my calendar, and you will have it for December's meeting. Okay, great. Yep. yep. I can report to you it's been very, very positive. And a couple ways that it's working well for not only the patron but for the staff is that when we lost power, TLN lost power for a couple days, so we had to go on the backup system even though we had power. You cannot check out without a library card. So we, we would have had to have turned away patrons, but because the patrons now are completely used to um, using their library card, coming in and knowing that they need it, we had very little turn, turn away of our patrons. So that's a benefit. Um, for those situations, it really is. And we, I can tell you that um, we've not, I, I have, um, Wendy Teagan, who is the department head for support services, has had very, very little. In fact, there's been nothing that's reached me in terms of a really big concern of having to have your library card. She's been able to work with and educate, and her staff has as well, and we've not had the issues. People are responding to it, and... 
yes. That's the ability to use smartphones is all moving forward. We've given opportunities for how to do it, how to download it, three different ways that they can put that in. They can use different apps that are free that they can put their library cards in. When they're getting the new library card, they have three options, the key ring that they get, the wallet size that they get, plus the phone. So it's working really well. But I'll be happy, I have her ready to, I have a little reminder in my calendar of touch base, get a report, and all that will come back in December. Mm -hmm. Yep, you're welcome. Good question. Okay. Yeah, I, I did, For just go, going back to the, uh, the finance committee. Can you circulate to the committee members the, uh, the Walker materials in advance of that meeting? And then also with the city if they have... Is it the Walker contract that right. you'd be looking for? Okay, yes. And then if they... Uh, if the city has uh, an agenda as for what they're proposing, it would be nice to get that in advance. I will, yes, I'll find out if he's got every, anything in advance, absolutely. If, and then lastly, based upon um, the coming events with the uh, Light Up Novi, are we going to have any Christmas or holiday decorations at the library? And will the city be helping us with maybe the, the patio, given the fact that we're a... You know, we're a, a venue, if you will, for the citywide event. Two things have happened. First of all, Light Up the Night only occurs in the actual lobby area of the library, so it's not the full library that's used. Um, so they wouldn't be going out to the patio anyways. But I can tell you that today they were installing the lights and all the lamp posts that go down 10 Mile, and we're part of that. So we have received our, our greenery and, and our lights that have gone on the light posts to get ready for the event. And then um, this year, the past two years, we had um, a company called Just Gardens, and they came in and they decorated a holiday tree that the friends had donated to us of when we opened the new building. And so that's, that was decorated for two years. This year we had a sponsor, the um, O'Brien family, and O'Brien Sullivan Funeral Home sponsored for the tree to be decorated. So our, it's a beautiful peacock theme with lots of blues. Um, so the tree has gone up and has been decorated, and um, we will be turning on the lights just after Thanksgiving. So we do have a holiday tree in, in the library. Mm -hmm. And we have some great events um, for Light Up the Night. We have Dan Dan the Choo Choo Man, which runs a, a small choo choo train outside the library for kids to ride. We have two um, magic shows going on that evening. Uh, we will have a guest appearance by Mother Goose. Um, we have a new costume that was made for the library specifically, so um, out of wish list money from the friends. Um, also, um, Walmart and Menchie's will be at the library. They were sponsors this year for us. The library cafe will be open and giving out free hot chocolate. We'll have popcorn so, and face painting. So all our activities that we typically do, plus more, will be going on at our end. Mm -hmm. Yep. Has Trustee Sterling volunteered to play Mother Goose? <laughs> <laughs> I have been told that the costume fits many different sizes. <laughs> so, <laughs> if you are offering him and he's willing, we'll make sure he gets in that suit someday. <laughs> it's not a big enough costume. <laughs> motion to adjourn? Uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. Support? So Move. Moved. Second it. Did I hear a second? Yes. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposition. Gentlemen, please Very have good. a wonderful Thanksgiving holiday, and thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. <laughs>